Hello and welcome back. In previous session, we saw how we can use state management objects and uh, property accessors created under them, like uh, property accessors to manage end of a dialog and property accessors to manage dialog state. And then we created property accessors with key value pairs to track the, the previous topic. And then we tested our bot using emulate. Now in this session, we are going to create another component dialog and we will see how we can handle multiple component dialogs under one activity handler or our main dialog and you will also learn how to add adaptive cards to our bot. There are different kind of cards that are available under bot framework and each of them can be used for specific purposes but adaptive cards are one of the most versatile cards available right now and we are going to use that. To see a list of other cards that are available under bot framework we can go to bot framework documentation and there you will see a list of all the cards available. So let's go to documentation page. So if you go to Microsoft's documentation page and under uh, task modules and card section, under the card section, you will see a list of cards that are supported by bot framework. So if you scroll down, you will see a whole list of cards that are available for you to use. We are going to use adaptive cards. These are highly customizable cards that can contain any combination of text, speech, images, and uh, buttons and different input fields. So there are other cards like hero card If you want to provide a list to user you can use a list type of card and there are receipt cards signing cards sign in cards are used to ask user to sign in if you have a uh, Sign in functionality enabled in your bot. So let's go to adaptive cards page documentation page So this is the documentation page for adaptive cards and here you can see adaptive cards are a great fit for bots and a lot of people are using them. These can be rendered beautifully inside multiple applications like Microsoft Teams, your own website. So one of the greatest advantage of using adaptive card is these are platform agnostic. So you can use adaptive cards when you are building your bot for Skype or Facebook and a lot of different Microsoft applications like Microsoft Teams, Office 365. So that's the edge you get when you use um, adaptive cards instead of other type of cards that were previously available. So let's go back to our Visual Studio code and start building our cancel reservation dialog with adaptive card. So before we start building our cancel reservation dialog, we just need to quickly test our prompt validator function. So if you remember, we added the number of participants prompt validator function. And we are still to test if this is working fine or not. So let's go ahead and start our bot. So our validation checks for an input value for number of participants in our make reservation dialog uh, to be greater than 1 and less than 150. So the value should be between 2 and 149. So let's go ahead and test it. So I have my emulator working and connected to our RR bot. Let's go ahead and click on make reservation. I'm gonna type yes. And give a random name. We have already tested with correct values. Uh, we tried values like 10 and 11 and 15. Now let's go ahead and try inputting a value which is greater than 150. And we should see that the bot should prompt us again with the same message. So our prompt function checked if the value was uh, in the range. It was not in the range and that's why uh, our bot sent the same prompt again. So until we pass in the same, so until we pass the same value, so until we pass the correct value, we will keep on getting the same prompt. And if I give a correct value, let's say 10, the waterfall dialog moved to the next step. So here we have tested our uh, prompt validator function. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code and start building our component dialog. So now we need to create a new component dialog. Let's go to component dialogs folder and under this folder let's create another file called cancel reservation dialog. Yes. Looks fine. 
I'm gonna just copy the make reservation dialogs content to cancel reservation and then make modifications to this component dialog we do not need this function we'll need the summary step we'll need the confirmation step but we will not need all these steps so I'm gonna delete all these I'll keep the first step so our run function is going to be uh, same as before so I'm gonna keep it as is we are going to use a waterfall dialog again so I'm gonna keep that I'm gonna remove these steps that we just deleted from the waterfall dialog stack let me remove the validator function and then we need to change the name of the class this will be cancel reservation this is again going to be a component dialog we will need the end dialog variable and uh, everything else so I'm gonna keep everything else right there and then we need to modify the exported modules name I'm gonna keep cancel reservation and that's it so we are going to pass conversation state user state from the main dialog which is rrbot let's go to rrbot and import this dialog so I'm going to just copy it and then modify the name so we have imported our uh, new dialog in our main dialog everything else is going to be same let's add a global object inside the constructor function of rrbot let's name it this dot cancel reservation dialog and then this is an object of cancel reservation dialog we're gonna pass the conversation state and user state as before everything else going to be just as before in the dispatch to intent async function we need to add another case for cancel reservation so I'm just gonna copy the make reservation case and then modify it and name it cancel reservation so when you present the user with the welcome message and if the user chooses cancel reservation as an option then this case needs to be triggered just make other modifications and change everything to cancel so we still need to check if uh, so here we again so here we are again starting a new dialog and we so here we are again starting a new dialog and we need to set uh, the value of end dialog in code the value of end dialog property accessor to false and then we need to initiate the cancel reservation dot run method and we are passing the same dialog state object that we created earlier uh, this is not going to change and then once the dialog is complete we are again checking if the value of end dialog is true or false by invoking the cancel reservation dialogs is dialog complete method and then again if the uh, end dialog is true that means uh, cancellation is done and we need to provide user with the suggested actions message once again
so that's all that's how easy it is uh, to add another component now let's go back to our cancel reservation dialog and start modifying the news tabs so as i said i'm going to use adaptive card to create the first tab of this waterfall dialog i, I just want to present the user with a uh, adaptive card which will contain some information of the reservation and along with the information I'm going to add some images to I'm going to add an image to our adaptive card and and then I'm going to ask a user for the reservation number and in confirmation step we are going to provide the user with the reservation number he has just entered and ask for a confirmation if he really wants to go ahead and cancel the reservation and then we are going to provide user with a success message in the summary step. So let's go ahead and see how we can add an adaptive card to our bot. So before we start building our first adaptive card, let's see how we can actually design it. So if you go to adaptivecards.io website, so Microsoft is actively working on adding a lot of new features to adaptive cards. They want to make it usable across uh, number of different platforms and uh, they are developing it for Android, iOS, JavaScript, ASP.NET uh, for various Microsoft products like Skype and Microsoft Teams, Salesforce. So and Microsoft is pushing to make adaptive cards uh, industry norm so that a lot of different companies and applications start adopting it and they have been successful to quite extent till now. Adaptive cards are created in a JSON format and then can be rendered as a snippet of UI on multiple different platforms and frameworks. So let's go to Schema Explorer and see how an adaptive card really looks like. So if you scroll down, you will see they have a sample adaptive card built for you. That And they have also provided an explorer where you can build your own adaptive cards in the similar format and then test it for yourself. So adaptive card works as a framework and they have a very standard uh, format in which you can build them. All adaptive cards will have a type of adaptive card and a version string. Then you can define the body of adaptive card. Uh, something like this. You can define a container and inside the container you can define different column sets. And inside each column, you can define an image or a text or any other information. So if you can see here, inside the container, in this example, you can see different items have been added. So a text block will look like this once it is rendered in the application. And then they have multiple columns like board list assigned to, it goes in one column. And then this is another column set. So in a similar way, you can add a number of different elements in each column, in each container, in a, each column set. Uh, it could be an image or a website URL or a link to a video, or it can be a date format. So you can see here, this will transform into something like this. And then adaptive cards also provides you the action type of elements. An action element will be a clickable URL or it can be a text box where you can enter a value. So in this example, you can see they have added an action to show another card inside the adaptive card. So this is like a nested adaptive card. So here you can see there's another card with a different body where the user is asked to uh, enter the comment and then another action which is taking in the comment when user clicks OK. So here if you type on comment, this is another adaptive card that has just been rendered for you and you can enter a message and click OK. And once a user clicks OK, here you can see the action has been executed. So in a similar way, you can so you can go through this documentation and see what all uh, action items and what all card elements, container items and action items are available. 
they keep on updating this website uh, pretty regularly they are keep they are adding a lot of different new features almost every month so i would suggest you do visit this website and start uh, exploring adaptive cards to help you with starting with adaptive cards there are a lot of samples which are available if you click on the samples link and here you can actually go and see a uh, lot of different kind of adaptive cards pre-built for you you can modify these or add different actions or items to these and start working on the adaptive card according to your use case your business case so let's go back to schema explorer i've already created one adaptive card for our uh, cancer reservation use case i've created a simple adaptive card which displays information about our restaurant and then ask the user to enter the reservation number that he or she wants to cancel so i'm gonna go on schema explorer and then click on try it yourself And then here I'm going to just paste the adaptive card that I've created. And there you go. I've created a simple adaptive card which has a column set. And, and under the first column, I'm defining the width of the column that I want. There's a text box which calls samosa. And then there is another text box which gives the name of the restaurant. Uh, I've made it bold and extra large. And similarly, I have two more text boxes stacked vertically. And then there is another column where I'm just simply displaying a picture by providing the URL. And then if you go up, this is how our adaptive card is going to look like. So you can use this designer to uh, create your own adaptive card. There are a lot of different options, combinations that you can create. I will leave that to your own creativity. And as per your use case, your business case, you can create uh, different adaptive cards with a lot of different elements so for now I'm just gonna go back to our Visual Studio code and create a file for our reservation adaptive card so so in our root folder let's go ahead and create a new folder called sources and under resources folder I'm gonna create another folder called adaptive cards And then under adaptive cards, I'm going to create a file called Restro. And this will be in JSON format. And I'm going to paste my adaptive card that I just created. Let's go back to our cancel reservation dialog. Now, adaptive card library is provided by pod builder module. So, we need to import card factory class from pod builder module. And we need to import our uh, restro card that we just created. I'm going to name it Restro Card and then import it from Resources, Adaptive Cards, and then Restro Card. Sorry, some small case. And that's it. So we have imported our card factory, which will uh, help us render our adaptive cards. And then we have imported our restro card JSON file. In the next step, let's define an array where we can add all our adaptive cards. If you have multiple cards, it gets really easier to just define an array and then pick up the cards from that array. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just call it so I'm going to call it cards open the array and then right now we just have one adaptive card 
I'm gonna put it close array. Now let's go to our first step in waterfall dialog. So adaptive cards are sent as an attachment and we need to trigger uh, the context objects uh, send activity method to send a text along with the uh, attachment which will be our adaptive card. So I'm going to just paste the method here. So here you can see we are invoking the send activity method of our step.context and then sending a text message along with the adaptive card from the array. So we have just one item. So I'm putting cards.0. This will I'm putting the first item in the array. So this will pick up our restaurant card from the cards array. And then, and then once our card is rendered, we want um, user to enter a reservation number which he wants to cancel. And for that, I am prompting the user uh, to enter a text message and just putting an empty uh, message. So the user will just see the adaptive card and then he can enter the um, reservation number. And the second step, we are going to save that number in a variable and in the second step I'm going to uh, print the reservation number that the user just gave let's just remove from here reservation number and then print the reservation number we just saved and received from the previous step. The next step we are going to uh, send the message as an activity and then prompt the user if he is sure to cancel the reservation. Let me just Put this in capital. In the third step, we just want the user to receive a message that the reservation has been successfully cancelled. And then end the dialog and make the value of end dialog as true. So everything looks fine. So let's go ahead and try to start our bot. So our bot has successfully started. Let's go to emulator and test our bot. So I've opened my emulator. I'm gonna open the already saved RR bot configuration. And then once the welcome message is displayed, I'm going to click on cancel reservation this time and we should see the adaptive card that we just uh, created. And there you go. So we can see the adaptive card has been displayed and we also get the message to enter the reservation details for cancellation. Let's go ahead and enter some random value. So here you can see the bot sent a uh, summary of the values that we uh, sent in the first step. So reservation number has been displayed and then and in the second step uh, the bot also asks us to give a confirmation to cancel the reservation. I'm going to type yes. So the waterfall model moved to the third step and it has cancelled our reservation and gave us a confirmation and then again prompted the suggested action method from the RR bot switch case. So here our cancelled reservation uh, waterfall dialog is working fine as expected. But what happens if I try to switch to another topic, let's say make reservation. Here you see that we are still getting the old topic that was to cancel the reservation. 
we are still getting that waterfall dialog and this is happening because we haven't yet taken care of setting the old topic to null along with setting the end dialog value in our dispatch to intent async method in our main dialog so let's go to our main dialog so once the dialog is complete you can so here you can see inside our switch case once our cancel reservation dialog is complete we are getting the value of end dialog as true but we still have the previous topic uh, previous intent name set to cancel reservation so here we need to set i'm just going to copy this statement and then paste it here and i'm going to set the intent name value to no. So what we have done here is once the end dialog value is true, our dialog is complete, that particular topic is complete and then we are setting the topic name or intent name as null. And we need to do the same and we need to do the same for each switch case for each topic. And that's it. Let's restart our board. Let's go to our emulator and try to test it again. Let's restart the conversation. I'm going to quickly click on cancel reservation. Just give a random reservation number value. Are you sure you want to cancel? I'm going to choose yes. And we are again presented with suggested actions dialog. I'm going to choose a different topic which is make reservation. And the bot should take us to uh, make reservation waterfall dialog. There you go. So here you can see we are successfully able to uh, track an ongoing dialog and also we are able to track an ongoing topic. And our bot is able to route the conversation between two component dialogs. So let's go back to our Visual Studio code. So both of our component dialogs are almost ready. One last thing that I wanted to cover here is uh, the case when user wants to choose no in the first step of our make reservation dialog. So here I am on my make reservation dialog.js file. And on the first step, we are asking the user uh, for a confirmation with yes and no as the possible answers. So we already looked at the case when the user chooses to go ahead and make the reservation, which is uh, when he chooses yes. But what if the user chooses no? So in this case, you can just simply call the end dialog method in any of the steps. Let's see how we can do it. So let's put another case. Let's copy it. I'm just going to check if the step dot result is false when user chooses no. Our step dot result is going to give false as a result. And then inside the if case, I want to send activity to user. So, so here I'm calling the send activity method of context. And then I'm going to pass a simple message saying you uh, choose not to go ahead with reservation. I'm going to save it. And then we need to make end dialog value as true because we are ending the dialog here. And then return the step dot end dialog method to our main dialog. So let's go ahead. Let's open the terminal and and start our bot. Our bot is up and running. Let's go to emulator. Let's restart the port and then choose make reservation as the option. And this time we're going to choose no. And here you can see that we got the message that the user chose not to go ahead with the reservation. And then uh, we were presented with the suggested actions message once again. And here, if you choose another topic, this should work as well. 
So that's all for this session. I'm going to see you in next lecture.